Hi, I'm Scott Behrens, founder of U.S. Centrifuge. Today we're at Interprint in Pittsfield, Massachusetts to take a look at our automatic batch sequencing process system for treating wastewater. The objective of the waste treatment system here is to take the water they use to rinse down their printing equipment, which looks like this, chemically treat it, and then centrifuge the flocculated solids back out, forming a relatively moisture-free cake that can go to landfill for disposal. Then, to have a clear effluent that can be discharged to the city sewer. This is a 10,000 gallon raw liquid waste storage tank. When they wash down the presses, the water is pumped directly into this tank. We selected a 10,000 gallon uh, tank primarily to give uh, about a day to a day and a half of storage time, as well as it allows us to get a nice homogeneous mix of the waste. We keep the, uh, the liquid in the tank mixed up uh, via some eductor nozzles and a pump mounted under here. This pump also serves to transfer the liquid to the reaction tank. An ultrasonic level sensor in the top of the tank gives us an adjustable range of how much volume we want to keep in this tank prior to pumping it over to the reaction vessel. The batch reaction tank also includes an ultrasonic liquid level sensor. When the tank reaches the high level set point, it stops the transfer from the raw liquid waste tank. Then it begins the chemical dosage, and the mixer in the top of the tank begins mixing the polymer into the liquid waste. For ease of installation, we engineered the process reaction tank package and all of its components to be all interconnected, pre-wired, and mounted so it could ship as a single unit. This is a chemical makeup tank for the process system. Joel mixes up his polymer and water uh, ratios in this tank, blends it, and then a peristolic pump doses it into the uh, reaction tank uh, during the process cycles. This is the peristolic pump. It feeds the polymer mix into the reaction tank. We can control the dosage by the amount of time that we operate this Once pump. Once the chemical reaction has taken place, we stop the mix and we let the tank sit idle. We control three variables in the process of the liquid waste. The amount of chemical dosage, the amount of mix time, and the amount of time we let the tank sit idle. As the tank sits idle, the flocculated solids settle into the bottom of the cone and a clear layer of liquid develops in the top portion of the tank. The tank is set idle for X amount of minutes and we want to start the decant cycle. We first have to check the turbidity to make sure it's okay. How we do this is the decant pipe in the tank extends about six inches above the cone. So we want to pull a sample from that line and we do that with this small air pump that feeds up through this line that incorporates turbidity monitor. If the turbidity checks okay, and then checks OK again on a repetitive basis, then we can begin the decant cycle. Once we've checked the turbidity in the top portion of the tank and determined that it's OK for discharge, we make a valve sequence and initiate the uh, decant pump, which then pumps the liquid out of the tank and down the discharge line. We're ready to decant the tank. The effluent will discharge through this line. In the case of Interprint, it goes to the city sewer. When we decant the water, we monitor the turbidity, the pH, and the flow. This is all recorded for the purposes of plant records and to report to the city. We also have a sample tap here which will open and check the clarity of the water coming out of the system when we decant in just a couple minutes. Now we're going to check the clarity of our discharge. things Interprint needed to be able to do was record and monitor the effluent discharges from the system. Uh, that way they had a record and they could provide a record to the city upon request. I'd like to bring in Rick Thompson who's our electrical engineer and control specialist at U.S. Centrifuge and largely responsible for the uh, programming and how this system actually functions. Rick's going to tell us all about this effluent monitoring package. I'll cover the effluent monitoring package with you. Um, the customer had a need to be able to record and report as necessary uh, the solids content of any fluids they may be discharging to the city. Um, to accomplish this purpose, we put together an effluent monitoring package that included a turbidity probe, a pH probe, and electromagnetic flow meter. All three of those devices are fed back to channels of um, a digital chart recorder. Each channel or each process variable is logged in different colors 
on uh, the recording device. The liquid is fed from the bottom of the tank to these two centrifuges. These are fully automatic self-cleaning units. They centrifugally separate the solids from the liquid and then discharge them as a relatively moisture-free cake into these hoppers. completed the clean cycle and discharged the cake, and it's resumed processing again. Now you can hear that the machine's nice and quiet, but the real beauty is that the machine is fully automatic and self-cleaning. It required no operator intervention to clean the sludge from the unit, and it yields a nice, typically compacted, relatively moisture-free cake. We've processed four batches today, and now the hoppers are totally full and ready for Joel to pick up with the forklift and take to the compactor for disposal. This is the raw liquid that we started with. This is the liquid that we decanted to the drain. And this is the sludge the centrifuge has extracted from the remaining liquid. I'd like to bring in Bruce Woolley, facility manager here at Interprint. Bruce, I got one big question. You could have done the same thing and picked a flash mix tank, a clarifier, a sludge thickening tank, and a filter press. And yet you chose to take a risk and use a pair of centrifuges and, and the rest of the process package that we provided for you. Why? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, well, Scott, um, we did a lot of extensive research on different systems uh, before we decided on this particular system. Um, but Interprint has a philosophy. We're a pretty forward-thinking company, and we're always looking for the newest technology that's on the market. Uh, we also like to work with uh, our suppliers and vendors uh, to try and help them along in their businesses also. We, we have a history of uh, forming partnerships with uh, the people that we do business with. Um, so we wanted to give U.S. Centrifuge a chance to uh, work with us and see what we could put some new technology online that would benefit both companies. Uh, well, Scott, um, we did a lot of extensive research on different systems uh, before we decided on this particular system. Um, but Interprint has a philosophy. We're a pretty forward-thinking company, and we're always looking for the newest technology that's on the market. Um, we also like to work with uh, our suppliers and vendors uh, to try and help them along in their businesses also. We, we have a history of uh, forming partnerships with uh, the people that we do business with. Um, so we wanted to give U.S. Centrifuge a chance to uh, work with us and see what we could put some new technology online that would benefit both companies. I'd like to bring in Joel Cross. Joel's uh, a member of the maintenance staff here at Interprint, as well as the operator of this system. Joel, this looks like a fairly complex system, but can you tell us really how easy it has been to use, and how does it compare to the system that you had before? Actually, it's, actually, it's a lot easier to operate than the old system, and you get a lot drier cake and a lot less moisture out of the sludge, and it takes about half the time to...